caught me doing something here that I really don't like. You guys know I hate stick welding. I don't like it. But what I've got here is a pedestal for my sculpture of where you go. There you are. Great big torus, nine foot in diameter. It's going to a museum back in Pennsylvania. And they said, can we pick it up a little? Get it up off the sidewalk. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so this is all half inch plate. Oh my God, it's heavy. <laughs> Haven't put the top on it yet. It's lying here on the floor. When the whole thing is complete, just the pedestal should weigh about 1,100 pounds. So cranes are involved and steel-toed boots. Don't worry about that. So what I've been doing is, you know, I went down and I bought uh, four, four by eight by half inch thick sheets of steel. Laid it all out right here on my lift table. Cut it all with my longevity force cut 62i plasma cutter and then picking it up with my gantry crane, putting them all in place one at a time, getting my ankles just about right, you know, tacking everything together. Now it's time to come in with a stick welder and some heavy rod and start welding it all together. So a friend of mine said, oh, wait, wait, I got something for you. And he came back the next day and he brought me his brand new uh, Everlast Power Arc 300 amp, tick, or a 300 amp stick welder. <laughs> oh boy. So it's over here on the floor. Come take a look. So it's really the same size uh, as the Power TIG 255 EXT. I, I think it's in the same case, but it's got a different face on it. So on the front of it, you've got just a display screen, shows where your amp knob is set at, and then some indicator lights across the top showing on and over temperature and a short light. So if you happen to like lay the stinger down and turn the machine on, you know, I need to read the book and you didn't bring that. A hot start adjuster for your amperage and a arc force adjuster to help with the penetration. And on the bottom of the machine you just hook up for your ground, you know, just the regular the regular twist in ends connector. Uh, hook up for positive for your stinger, and then it's also got a sec separate hookup if you're running 6010 rod, which just gives you a little more power when you're running 6010. It just takes it out of a, a different part of the, of the tap inside there, and it just gives you a little more power. Makes things easy. So, real easy to set up, real easy to use. It's just got the on off switch on the back of it over here. So, let me put my helmet on, we'll make some spark. I'm just running some uh, E7018 from Lincoln, and it's 8 inch in diameter. And I'm going to have the machine set at about uh, 100 and, uh, according to the back of the box, 90 to 135. So I'm going to be running about 130. Let me see how I can do here. Here's where I started. A little bit of a weave, a little bit of a Y, you know, up and back and up and back and just working my way up this way. Not quite sure what happened here. A little bobble on my part, I'm sure. And then working my way up again. So that 
first little spot, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. The other spot up here where I bobble a little, I'll probably grind that out and start over again. Or at least grind it down and get another pass on top of it. But this is just a root pass, you know, just to kind of get the two of them welded together. I'll get a good solid pass that way on the outside. So I've already done this side, the outside. I've already done that part, ground it down smooth. I've already got my root pass inside up here when it was upside down. So now that I'm getting my root pass outside, I'll come in and get our root pass inside. The insides I'll just leave alone. The outsides, once I've got, once I'm done with the stick, then I'll come back with the MIG, crank it up, get a nice cover over the top of it. You know, to fill it all in, you'll fill in whatever's left, hit it with the grinder, round it off, get it all nice and smooth, because that all shows. Inside, all I want is strength. I want penetration, I want a nice thick you know, thick bead in there so everything's held together. Get it inside, get it outside, get the bottom. Once all that's done, then I can stand it upright, and then I'll get my top, put my top on, get the pass, you know, get it all welded on the outside, and then probably lay it down again like this, or even flip it completely upside down, go inside through the bottom, come inside, and then do my pass inside once it's upside down and you know, lying down flat on the table. Plenty of ventilation, believe me. You know, uh, respirator, fan blowing in there, trying to get all the smoke out while you're in there working. So did you choose the arc welder because of the penetration on this thick metal? Because of the penetration, right, exactly. You know, I, I wanted to get you know some good amperage on it. I wanted to get a decent sized rod in there so I could put enough metal on it and you know, one or two passes to get the job done. But mostly, I got a half inch piece of steel I got to bite into. So I want something I can crank up and get some amperage going. But you only got, what, got up to what, 130, 140? Well, because that's all the rod is rated to. The rod, like it says on the box, the, you know, uh, DC plus or AC, 90 amps to 135, I think it is. You know, I was running a little hot. I was running a little high for this. But that machine, that 300 amp machine, oh, you can run quarter inch rod through that machine with no problem at all. Plenty of amperage over there for it. So big thank you out to Art. Thanks for loaning me your toy tool. I'll, I'll take good care of it and get some work done, you know, work done with it, get a little time on it, give you a good report. So I'm going to get back to work here. I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to keep it ahead of you.